Number 4, Silent Night. Coming up next on our list is Silent Night, the 2012 remake, not the original or any of its sequels. If I had to pick one, I thought I should end up picking the one that has Malcolm McDowell in it because to tell the entire truth, I'm scared of him in real life and I was only a little worried that if I didn't pick this one, he might find me. Well, the original Silent Night and its bizarre meme sequel definitely have a lot of fun stuff worth paying attention to. I figured that this one's a little more the speed of what people are looking for. It came off that nice little like slasher movie bump of the late 10s where they were kind of getting cool again. If you clicked on this list because you're looking for a horror movie that is like basically all the same vibes as like a Friday the 13th or a Halloween, you know, a classic slasher, except Santa's the lunatic instead of a guy in a hockey mask, I've got amazing news for you. That movie exists and it's called Silent Night. A small town in Wisconsin is being terrorized by a string of horrific slayings from someone in a Santa mask and suit going around to pay a visit to those who've been on the naughty list this year. If I had to describe Silent Night, I would say it's honest. Because this movie has a single goal and it's to make a movie about an evil psycho Santa Claus who gets people in increasingly violent, complex and oftentimes funny ways and it, it delivers that. There's not much to say about its characters or its plot really, you know, it's a bit basic but that's not the worst thing. You know, the kind of movie you'd absolutely pick out of a bargain bin for five dollars, packaged with three other movies. But it, it's fun, you know. Not every Christmas horror movie has to be Citizen Kane. Silent Night delivers what it needs to. It's got some great scares and great goal. Oh, I can't say this word on YouTube, but it's got. Well, you know what a horror movie bad guy tends to do to his victims in a horror movie? It's got great those. Okay, I hope I'm being subtle enough here. This one works all year round. But if you're a die-hard horror fan who needs a little blood splatter in your movies around the holidays, give Silent Night a spin. Let me know. What you think? Filling out our number three spot, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Speaking of claustrophobia, here is a flick that stirred up some serious claustroversy back when it was released. Okay, I'm sorry, controversy. Silent Night, Deadly Night tells the story of poor Billy, a young lad whose grandpa warns him to be wary of Santa while on his deathbed. After grandpa's parting words left Billy less than willing to embrace Saint Nick, his parents are killed by a man dressed Santa right before his eyes. Years later, after growing up in a Catholic orphanage run by an abusive nun, Billy is forced to dress up as Santa for the department store he works at. He walks in on a co-worker he's got a crush on being assaulted and absolutely loses it. And I mean loses it. Department store Christmas massacre orchestrated by a Santa fearing man in a red suit. Love that concept. There are just so many ways to creatively kill people with the stuff you find at the bay. You guys ever do that and walk through the bay and just think about how you'd murder everyone? No? It's just of course, wholesome families hated this concept and rallied for it to be removed from theaters immediately. Their Coca-Cola mascot Santa could not be sullied by this disgusting film industry. Interestingly enough, the director Charles E. Sellier Jr. was uncomfortable with shooting death scenes, causing editor Michael Spence to step up as co-director. Let the fact that the director was uncomfortable with some of the kills speak for how gloriously gory and fun this movie really is. A legendarily bad sequel was produced as well, reusing a shocking amount of footage from the first movie to frame the story. But hey, people get bloodthirsty around Christmas. What can I say? Starting us off at number five, Black Christmas, 1974. Ignore the remakes, this is the OG classic. Full disclosure, I haven't seen the new Bloomhouse one that came out on Friday the 13th, but I do plan on seeing it over the holidays. But back to discussing the retro gem that is Bob Clark's rendition of Black Christmas. Interestingly enough, Clark went on to make a Christmas story, which is disturbing in its own odd way. This is what some consider to be the original slasher flick. Yes, Psycho came before it, and yes, Texas Chainsaw came out earlier than that. I watched Joe Bob Briggs too. But for the sake of conversation and Canadian heritage, I like to think of this as the prototypical slasher. It's got one of the scariest endings too. Don't worry though, I won't spoil it too much, even if it did debut almost 50 years ago. This Toronto shot Christmas creep show is an absolute blast to this day and has some moments that remain taut and disturbing in ways that most modern horror has given up on trying. This is a flick that starts strong and keeps the creeps coming. We follow a group of sorority sisters as they get picked off one by one by a mysterious maniac over the Christmas break. There's lots going on that the audience is privy to that the characters never find out about, making this a smorgasbord of dramatic irony with moments where you just want to scream, don't go in there. Plus, many interpersonal conflicts between non-murderous folk make it so that they never really suspect that there's a real maniac on the loose. An unmonitored maniac is a dangerous maniac. The method to the killer's madness isn't discovered until too late, and let's just say the cops are largely confused and useless in this flick. 
This is a classic for a reason, with some chilling depths and great camera work, especially considering that this came before the advent of the Steadicam. Death by plastic strangulation, corpses left to rot in the attic, stabbing with a glass unicorn. Oh yeah. Love the festive spirit throughout as well. We got cozy sweaters, twinkling lights, carolers singing, drowning out a murder. Watch out for Barb, alright? She's my holiday inspiration. Getting blackout drunk on dark liquor, messing with the cops, yelling at people over the phone. What a woman. If you're in the mood for some 70s film grain to go along with your evil eggnog, give Black Christmas a go and tell Billy Merry Christmas, would ya? Coming in at number 4, Gremlins. Another timeless classic right here. This creature feature is equal parts creepy, violent, festive, and fun. Any movie with mass murder in the town square is enough to pull me right in. Of course, many folks out there will claim that Gremlins isn't scary. It's not R rated. This is for kids. And to that I say, relax. Gremlins is incredible. The story goes like this. A traveling salesman dad snags an unknown creature from an old Chinatown antique store and gives it to his son for Christmas. This little cutie comes with some rules and of course these rules are broken. And what happens when the rules are broken? Terrifying gremlins pop out and begin their reign of terror. And what a reign of terror it is. Like dozens of people are injured and even die. They literally fire an old lady at top speed out of her house via malfunctioning stair lift. The carnage is unmatched in other PG movies. The Mogwai and Gremlins are phenomenal mascots done up in top notch practical effects of years gone by. Stripe is especially terrifying, especially in that fountain scene. Would not want to walk in on that. I think back to my first time watching Gremlins and remember a scene that particularly disturbed me with surprisingly no monsters. Nope, it was Kate's haunting tale of Christmas past that really gave me goosebumps. I would say spoilers, but it has nothing to do with like the story itself. And I feel like this has been covered pretty widely. When when Kate and Billy are hiding from the gremlins, she reveals that when she was younger, her dad had snapped his neck in an attempt to come down the chimney as Santa Claus. She and her mom didn't realize until days later when the smell alerted to them what they had previously thought was a dead cat. Nope, not little tiger, but instead a rigor mortis ridden dad, still in full Santa garb. Talk about claustrophobia. I'm getting cold for Christmas, aren't I? Number three, Anna and the Apocalypse. Anna and the Apocalypse might be the only movie of its kind in its genre, being the landmark achievement in comedy zombie apocalypse Christmas musicals. And that's a good thing, you know, we love an innovator. Whether or not you think it works for you, I can guarantee you probably have not seen another movie like Anna and the Apocalypse. There's a lot of things here, a lot of moving pieces that all kind of have to fit in place for this thing to be enjoyable. And luckily the film lands the nigh impossible task of being funny, catchy, and a little scary. It's easily the best zombie musical comedy since Evil Dead the Musical, and yeah, that's real, and yeah, absolutely go see it if it ever comes to your town. You will not regret it. Sit in the splatter zone, get covered in blood. Oh, it's such a great time, but that's a different video. This film follows Anna, obviously, a graduating student unsure about her future ahead of her, and a group of friends that are all equally struggling with their personal issues in a sort of John Hughes breakfast clubby way. It's Christmas season, angst and doubt is in the air amongst the group of friends, and they sing like high school musical ballads about their their angst and it's violently upended by the zombie plague that spreads rapidly across the country seemingly overnight leading them all to take refuge in their high school the perfect backdrop for some holly jolly mayhem and undead slaying now this one's not as super like Christmassy as the others instead Christmas kind of serves as like fun set decorating for an already fun movie you know it's kind of it got a Christmas aesthetic this would have been a great film if it took place in April or May so really it's just kind of like gravy on top of the meat and potatoes of a super inventive zombie movie. There's a ton of influence from some of the 80s classics. Evil Dead is a huge one, and man, that's like the fourth time I've mentioned Evil Dead in this video. Is it that obvious it's my favorite horror movie? But there's some Dawn of the Dead vibes, a little Shaun of the Dead in there too, and honestly reminds me a lot of that Buffy the Vampire Slayer musical episode, which was the absolute best episode of that series. So check out Anna and the Apocalypse. It's got an unknown cast from a pretty unknown director, so you'll be able to impress all your cinephile friends with your knowledge of the independent movie scene at the next office Christmas. Christmas party. Number two, Black Christmas. Coming in at number two is Black Christmas. I hemmed and hawed if it should be the number one spot or the number two spot, but once we get to number one, you'll nod your head and you'll understand why I went the way I did. Anyway, Black Christmas. They've remade this one a bunch, but it's a story we just really believe in apparently. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be talking about the original, blessed to us from Bob Clark 
who's got one of the most bizarre filmographies out there, going from Black Christmas to A Christmas Story to Baby Geniuses, and its less than desirable sequel, Baby Geniuses 2 Super Babies. Black Christmas is set around the holidays and is one of the most classic slasher setups there could be. A sorority house is haunted by an unhinged stalker with a lust for blood. Black Christmas is actually loosely based on a real series of grisly crimes, thus making it the only entry on this list that actually applies to the title. Now, if you're a big time horror movie nerd, and I'm hoping you are, because why else would you be watching this? There's some argument out there that Black Christmas is one of the original slasher movies, like one of the ones that codified the genre, predating Carpenter's legendary Halloween by about four years. At the time, the film was seen as gaudy, tasteless, and just a string of senseless, violent scenes featuring victims suffering at a beautiful time of year, but hey, this was before movie reviewers knew that's exactly what we're looking for from horror movies. While the two subsequent remakes lean into the Christmas thing a lot more than the original, which is mostly just kind of set at Christmas, I chose this one mostly because A, I haven't seen the 2019 one, and B, because the original is a great piece of horror history that's often left behind whenever we talk about the classics. It's genuinely scary, it's very tense, and it is absolutely worth your time still to this day. Can't recommend it enough. Number three on this list is The Children. The Children is a horror mystery movie that was released in 2008. It's set in Britain and follows the story of these children turning evil on their parents. A family with two younger children and one teenager head to a secluded home to celebrate the new year. When they get there, they meet up with some other family members who happen to have two children as well. Everything is going fine at first until Pauline, one of the younger siblings, starts throwing up. This starts to happen to the other children as well, and it's believed by the parents that this is just due to the long car ride or something that they ate. Over the course of the evening and their stay though, these children start to turn on their parents, and it becomes clear that they've been possessed by some type of demon and are no longer acting as themselves. The movie got some pretty good reviews and is pretty scary if I'm being honest. I personally really like the fact that they're playing with the idea of children having to be good at Christmas time, and they really just flip that on its head. I would also say that the scariest thing for me in movies is having demon children. Actual demons I can handle, but the second that kids start acting like demons, that's when I get spooked. Definitely a solid overall horror movie, and would recommend if you want to get scared. Number two on this list is The Wolf of Snow Hollow. The Wolf of Snow Hollow is a movie that was released in 2020 and received some decent reviews. Now it is probably the least centered around Christmas time, but the story does take place during the Christmas season, and there is certainly a lot of Christmas trees throughout the set deck. I suppose if you classify Die Hard as a Christmas movie, then this one should definitely count as well. The Wolf of Snow Hollow is based in a small, ski-friendly town, and is basically a story about a werewolf. Deaths start to amount in the small town, and the officers of the town have got to track down who or what is responsible for the grotesque murders. With some strong themes of alcoholism and some really well-built relationships, this movie truly holds up. I also want to note that the editing and filming techniques that they employed when making this project are excellent at building tension. The movie is really the product of Jim Cunnings, who really took to the scene in a movie called Thunder Road in 2018. In this one, he stars, directs, and wrote the actual script, and you truly get the sense that it was done by one person because there is a sense of unity to the film, and everything kind of works together. I highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for a solid action thriller that will keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time. Number one on this list is Rare Exports A Christmas Tale. This is a 2010 Finnish movie that received quite a lot of critical acclaim. Based on two very successful short films, Rare Exports A Christmas Tale really flips the script on the standard Christmas horror movie. A young boy lives on a reindeer ranch with his dad in Scandinavia. The story starts on the day before Christmas when our hero and his friend are watching some Americans blow a hole in the ground with dynamite. This is nearby the ranch, but it's off limits to trespassers. The audience the audience becomes aware of a Christmas time legend about a monster who got trapped in the ice and was frozen. The two boys figure out that that must be what the Americans are trying to get to, but as you're all expecting, they're too late in trying to prevent it and the monster gets out. All of this is pretty standard horror, but what makes this movie pretty awesome is that the monster is Santa Claus. Well, it isn't exactly Santa Claus, but it looks pretty much exactly like him. 
So it's a Christmas horror movie where the killer monster is Santa. Like, that's so cool. The movie has 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 4 out of 5 on Empire, and 89% of Google users really liked it. Best of all, it's a completely foreign film. So you get to somewhat experience what a Scandinavian Christmas might be like, which is something that you can't really say for most Christmas movies. I also have to give it mad props because the budget was one of the lowest on this list, and yet it still is super highly rated. That just goes to show you guys that story, acting, directing, they're always gonna win out in the end. If you're looking for a really cool movie to dive into with some subtitles, this is the one for you.